What's up? It's Keith. In this video, I want to talk about how I had an anxiety attack in a customer's house while cleaning the windows. Uh, I know my, my channel is primarily about landscaping, but this is a small business together, and I don't hear anybody talk about this stuff ever, or they don't like admit it. And it's um, the anxiety and panic attacks that you can have at work, right in the middle of the job, right in the middle of the day. You can feel like you're being constricted, like you can't breathe, and like you just want to just flip out and hide and run even sometimes because it can get that bad. And if you reverse engineer the process, uh, there's usually a reason why it happens. And it happens due to uh, conflicting expectations, taking on a job at a low price, and you realize while you're doing the job, it turns out to be more work than you thought. And then you're sitting there having a panic attack because you know you're going through the gauntlet and now you're not going to be making any money. And like that. So here, here's the story. I'll just tell how it happened because it, it happens to me. There's only about, you know, a couple days a week where I'm having a real good day. And, a, and, and the rest of it is like you have so much stuff on your plate at once that it feels like you literally can't even do it all. And you can't, right? And I know... Some people comment and stuff, they say, well, that's why you need to delegate, 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 delegate. Well, if you're not at a point yet where you can delegate, or you're not at a point yet where you can, you know, have a $1,000 a month marketing budget, or you're not at a point yet, like, you got to get in where you fit in and do the next thing and grow, and you're always at the edge of your comfort zone. That's the way it works. You're not upset or ha having anxiety about the stuff that you already know how to do, Right? You're always on the very edge of your comfort zone, and that's what you're being exposed to. So in Windows, you can't always get inside of every single customer's house and open up all their windows like inspect their gadget and inspect it all. Sometimes you have to just quote that thing and nail that job down. And, you know, most of the time it works because there's, oh, I just finished a book by Gay Hendricks called The Big Leap. And he's talking about amazing stuff, kind of like what I'm, I'm talking about. And I'll get back to what I was saying, but he's saying there's so much information overload that we have to deal with that people are usually forced to make decisions without having every piece of information. Because if you had to have every single piece of information, you'd go into analysis paralysis and you wouldn't be able to get anything done. So we always go like this, not always, but sometimes, and we have to cross bridges when we get there. You gotta take, you know, we'll just figure that out when we get there. And that's mostly how people work, how small businesses work, how everything works. Obviously, you can plan out systems and protocols and everything, description and documents, and have everything down to a T, but still, just like uh, we get to a job the other day, a guy shows up, he lost his phone on the way to work. He doesn't know where his phone is. Now he's having a panic attack. Then we go to the job without him. Then he's out looking for his phone and he comes back and finds it. Then we weren't able to walk the property. And then this guy pulled out a wrong piece of equipment. Now he's dealing with a water fed pole when we're supposed to be only squeegeeing this windows, but I didn't get to tell him that. And now he's got the water fed pole thing all tangled up on a customer's property. Now we got three, I'm getting to it. Now we got three guys trying to untangle one, like a big extension cord, the line for the water fed pole. And I freak out and I'm like, you know, we're not even supposed to be using this piece of equipment on this property. And I'm paying two guys and myself to look like idiots on a customer's property to do this. Right, And then I realized, whoa, 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 how did this happen? So if you take a deep breath and calm down and say, how did it happen? I didn't even get to the story yet. Oh, it happened because things that are outside of your control jump on your plate, one at a, like jump on your plate all over you and now you can't even move forward with the plan of your day or you move forward, you push through it anyways. But it, 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 it just, that's the nature of it. Welcome to being in business, my friend. That's what I hear all the time. My buddy Scotty says. So uh, the wife of Tron goes out and quotes a window cleaning job. She does a great job. She walks the property, takes pictures of it. It was like, uh, what was it? 300 bucks or something. Inside, outside, track sills and screens. No, it's 325. Two-story, colonial house. Perfect. 
We get there, and I had a funny feeling. I knew something wasn't right, but we were so busy on landscape jobs and other window cleaning jobs that we weren't able to, I wasn't able to get there to inspect it. We get to the house, we walk inside, all white everything. White carpet, white furniture, white flat paint walls, white tile, white carpet going up the steps, and white everything. Now, we are very clean and conscientious inside of the house, but when you have white everything, you can't even drop a single drip of dirty water that, that goes down the channel of the squeegee in between two cleaning windows. Everything you has to have to do is extremely conscientious, like you're walking around in a laboratory, like you're an apple or something, or you're in like a clean room with booties on your feet, and you have to be so conscientious. If you even scrape the squeegee up against a wall, oh, one strike, you're out. A drop of water on the floor, two strikes you're out right the anxiety kicks in the lady is sitting there and she already seemed like she didn't trust us right off the bat she says i can't make nobody happy and no no she says nobody can make me happy and i don't care how many people come to clean the windows or do whatever you can't make me happy because okay this is part two of anxiety on a window cleaning job go back and watch part one first so we get in the customer's house and she's like you can't make me happy i cleaned for years you know cleaning company or whatever and if i can't see dirt nobody can and instantly this lady's expectations i realized were so high that i knew that there was nothing that we could possibly do to make her happy and it was gonna make, she was gonna be pissed, she was gonna complain, she was gonna be upset. And I could feel that if we even stepped on a crack, we did anything wrong, that she would bite our heads off and just stick it to us. It was such a stressful situation right off rip that I went into complete tension. And I was trying, I'm, I, I do breathing exercises when I'm cleaning the windows. Have you ever been in a house cleaning the windows and for some reason you have anxiety so bad? Like you're just upstairs cleaning window, dripping in sweat. You're cleaning a window and scrubbing tracks or whatever and you have anxiety so bad that you're like, oh my God, 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 oh my God. Like you, you feel like you just wanna go up to the customer and be like, I can't do this right now, screw you, we quit, we're out, and you just wanna leave and shut down your whole company and go like, go sit in the woods. <laughs> like, it gets so bad, and you feel like you're being squeezed through the cracks. You feel like you're being like literally ripped apart and, you're, and it's pushing out and leaking out the sides and you're just being just, you feel that? That's like the only way that I can explain what it feels like. And then worst of all, if you got employees, if you got workers, you gotta go outside and you gotta hide that from your guys and from your customer and you can't because even if you're straight faced and talking, they can feel it turning in your stomach. They could feel the tensions and the knots so bad. Everything is energy. That looked kind of funny, I like, <laughs> feel like the shaking weight. <laughs> but anyways, um, you're, they can feel the energy, your workers can feel the energy, people can feel it, and you can't conceal it or hide it even if you're trying to. Now they're stressed out and they're tense. So we all started, we started cleaning the windows like normal, but I open up the windows and I notice they're filled with dead flies and bugs and gunk and algae and crap, and they're the, the worst type of windows of all. They're these white vinyl sliding, double sliding windows. And down in the cracks, they're the ones with the really, really deep cracks where there's so much crud and crap and gunk and crap and spider webs that you can't even, you can't even clean that shit unless you literally like bust out like a science lab and do spend a half an hour on each window with dentist hooks. We have dentist tools inside of the trailer in case the customer wants like the, the premium package. We're talking like 500 bucks to clean your windows. And unless you go in there with a vacuum with microscopic attachments and fish out every single tiny little thing and then keep sudsing it with soap and water and scrubbing it and fishing out. So I said, stop to the guys, we're cleaning the windows. We're already 20 minutes into the job and I realized what we were up against. And the lady sitting there like biting her nails, analyzing, watching everything that we're doing. And I knew she was like, you guys are idiots. Oh my God, who did I hire? We were just in the doghouse. But we were just trying to clean the windows. 
I grab my guys, I go, stop. We have to approach this entirely. Stop everything you're doing. Stop, 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 stop. In front of the customer, I get worked up talking about it. Customer could overhear, she's sitting in her front room watching and I'm out on the front porch. I say, okay, we have to approach this job completely different than every other window cleaning job. This happens about one out of every 20 jobs. These windows are so dirty, I need you. You can either run around with a backpack blower and blow out all the tracks or you can get uh, the hose with a spray. I'm going to run around and lock, close and lock all the windows. Now mind you, all the windows didn't even close and lock properly. They're so warped from time and heat or whatever that they wouldn't even lock. And I was pressing, they wouldn't lock. You run around with the hose and spray out all the tracks and pre-clean all the windows and spray all the gunk back and forth out of the tracks. And I'll walk around and I'll watch and make sure no water comes inside of the house so I can stop you. And then I told the other guy, you take all these screens and start cleaning all these screens. The screens were filthy. They were covered in uh, cotton from the cottonwood trees here in Michigan and just gunk and dirt and the insides of all the cracks of all the screens were so dirty. I said, we're going to be here till 11 o'clock tonight and I'm going to lose my ass. So the guy starts cleaning all the windows. Then I'm caught in this direction. I'm caught in this direction. And then I realized that... Um, we were supposed to be at another job of a customer that um, we missed something and had to go back and he was calling me pissed off because he had company coming in and then the phone was ringing and then we had all this shit going on. I'm on a job right now having a fucking panic attack and there was nothing I could do but sit there and let that other shit burn. Let it burn. I had to literally walk out of the lady's house and walk down the street and she's like, what the hell is going on? What are these idiots doing? They start cleaning the windows and then they stop. And now they're doing this and now they're washing it and the owner is walking down the street on his phone looking all stressed out. The lady was like, what the hell is going on? I couldn't hide it. I couldn't conceal it. There was so much shit to deal with at once in that moment that it all squeezed right on that spot. And it happened to be right in the middle of a job site on the lady's job with that. And my perceptions of it were twisted as well. So I was over polarizing. That's what happens when you're in anxiety. You overpolarize on the worst possible thing, and then that becomes all that is to you in the moment, and that's all you can see, right? The world's not going to end. I walked down the street. I called a customer who was pissed and waiting us. I said, listen, man, and I knew him personally. I happened to know the client. Cool with him. I said, listen, we are swamped and backed up and I'm having a very hectic day. I, knew, I know that I said I was going to be there. I cannot be there today. There you go. That's a bad strike. I said, but before I said that, I had my guy get in the truck right now and go over to that other job site, leave this window cleaning job and go there and fix that. But we needed him on this job site to finish this job because we had another job. You know what I'm saying? When you're in small business, you got so much shit coming at you. You got to make executive decisions in real time. And, <laughs> and, you got to make executive decisions in real time and make it all work and make that shit work and piss people off at the same time, let people down, choose who's going to like, I've, I've gotten to the point when I've had a panic attack before and I'll finish my story and I, I start cussing. I'll call up my wife or something. <laughs> Don't ever do something. <laughs> but it's okay. I go, I literally have to pick who I'm going to fuck over right now. Who, who is Keith going to fuck over? I'm the biggest piece of shit walking right now. Who am I going to fuck over? Am I going to fuck over this person or I'm going to fuck over that person? Because somebody's getting fucked. Right? And I'm getting fucked. We're all getting fucked. <laughs> She's like, calm the fuck down and what needs to be done? I'm like, okay, okay, okay. This, 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 and this. And then the person on the phone or whoever you're, you're bitching to just sounds like you're just going on with all this drama. So I told the customer my situation. I said, listen, we're having a hectic date. We can't be there until tomorrow. But tomorrow we had another job anyways, and that pushes that back. We didn't do that. I said, all right, don't leave in the truck. And now when you, when you're, when you become flaky like that and you're having a panic attack, now your employees don't know what to do when they're walking eggs. Should, should I stay? Should I go? Should I stop? Should I start? What the hell do I do? My boss is crazy. We're going to finish this window cleaning job. And then I go and the lady's now freaking out and pissed off. I go back in the house. She goes, what the hell are you guys doing? Just, just 
clean my windows and get out of here. You guys don't even know what the hell you're doing. You're not even a real company. I can't believe I called you guys to come clean the windows. I'm like, oh shit, now the customer thinks we're like idiots. And I go, I promise you, we're awesome window cleaners. We clean doctors and lawyers and dentists. I don't believe you, you're full of shit. You guys have no idea what you're doing. And now there, you couldn't win for losing. I said, you know what? I'm so stressed out right now because I know there's no way that I can make you happy. I just called it the way it was to the customer. I said, come over here. This is when I got, you get to the point where you go for broke. You're like, you know what? I don't give a shit anymore. I'm just calling it out the way it is. I said, come over here to the customer. I opened up her window and I showed her. I said, you told me if you can't see dirt, nobody can. Okay, obviously I would never, you don't even know where this job is, okay? It's because I'm speaking this to the world right now. You see all that gunk and crack and stuff, crap and stuff in the windows? Watch me clean this entire window and I want to make sure it's good enough for you so we can meet your expectations or we can't do this job and we have to leave. She goes, what, you have to leave? I said, yes. Watch me clean this window. I cannot get that gunk inside of these tracks you, and, you, and, and your expectations are so high that there's no way that I can make you happy. I, I, I can't explain, I wish you could see the window. It's so deep in there that you just can't get it. And I clean the whole window and the lady says, you're gonna leave? If you leave, I'm calling the cops on you. So she threatens to call the cops. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're gonna do this job right now and I'm gonna knock your socks off. We're gonna do this whole job and it's gonna be perfect. Now the lady's like, what's going on? It turns out really good. <laughs> it turns out good. Ah, it's so vulnerable to talk about this shit on YouTube because all the successful people that you see that put their shit on the internet, they don't fucking talk about this. They don't fucking talk about it and it's driving me fucking nuts. Nobody has the fucking balls to talk about this shit. So I'm fucking doing it right now. Then I go to clean her her laundry room window. Okay, part three. So nobody has the balls to talk about this shit. I don't see other business owners talking about it because they only want to talk about their, their successes. Because I don't want to put out a book, How to Make $500 a Day Cleaning Windows, unless I'm going to talk about the stress that you go through to get to that point. And even, even I, I'm not some grand successful window cleaner. I'm a dude who figured out how to get to this point and I like to teach the stuff. I love, I'm very passionate about doing this or I wouldn't be doing the stuff, right? Because when I talk to Joshua Latimer, this dude, automategrowsell.com, 100 to 150,000 a month in his window cleaning business running 10 trucks. I talked to this guy on the phone. I was on the phone with him till like three in the morning the other night and it blew my mind the, the way and level at which he's talking and speaking, right? I can't give any of his his tips. I'm not taking any of his stuff. I can only speak, you know, from where we're at. But anyways, we're in the, I'm in the laundry room now. I go to, I go to open up the window and the window is jammed and it won't move because remember I told you how the windows are all warped and I have to force it to open it to get the screen open and then it pops off the track. Now I go to, I take the window out so I can at least clean it because now at this point it was already off the track and it was, everything was all messed up. Whole house is like this, a nightmare job. I'm like, oh my God, the track is actually stuck because the window hasn't been open in 15 years and there's nothing I can do but now take off on my gear and my belt and go out to the window cleaning trailer and get the tools and now come back in here when this already, lady already thinks we're idiots and fix her. I go in there. I'm cli I climb up on this lady's washing machine and I'm banging with a hammer and a, uh, a tool to release the track back into place so I can get it back up so I can get the window back in and then slide it. She comes in, she goes, what the hell are you doing? The window was already broken, the plastic piece, because someone had already forced it previously and the whole plastic piece of the lip of the of the the sill, it's like a plastic lip that sticks out, was completely broken off. And uh, she had some previous damage on her windows. And beforehand, 
I said, listen, I'm going to walk around and do a pre-trip inspection and let you know if there's any pre-existing scratches or any things on the window so to let you know that we didn't do it. And I did. I pointed out a couple things to her and she said, oh, I know, I know, they don't lock, I know they're messed up, I know this, I know that. Well, in the middle of the pre-trip inspection, I had got pulled aside from all these other things and that's why I didn't notice that crack. She comes in when I'm banging on the window and the window's broken, I go, listen, and I had to like get, not irate, but I had to get really firm and raise my voice with this lady and say, listen, your window is broken. I'm, I tried to clean it and I opened it and the thing won't open or close and it's jammed and now I'm doing this and this was already broken and I swear to God on the Bible, I did not break your window. She goes, okay, okay, just put it back, do what you do, clean the windows and get the hell out of my house. I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. You know that feeling where you get so pissed, you walk out of a customer's house and you go hide in your trailer and you go, motherfucker, son of a motherfucker, God, God. right? And you just want to go crazy because you're having a panic attack and your guys can feel it. You're like, oh my God. So I said, <laughs> this is when it changed. This is when it changed. <laughs> I told my wife that the cops, which the lady was going to call the cops. So she, then my phone dies, right? And then she had, uh, I think she had one of the guys who works for me is uh, one of her best friend's brothers. And so she was able to get his number, but his phone was off too, or in the truck. She thought that I was in the back of a cop car and there was some big scene going on at a customer's house. And she comes out from doing a quote all the way like on the west side and she starts driving towards the house. <sighs> I'm getting worked up. She texted me before I turned my phone off. She says, go, run, like get the hell out of there. Get out of that job, leave. It's gonna be bad news no matter what. And it would be like, dude, I'm like, dude, I'm Mr. Never walk off a job no matter what. But this is one of those jobs that it was a shit show. It was a nightmare. It was, there was no, it was a shit show. And this lady was just like, it was bad. So we're, we're gonna leave. She texts me, go, run. But I misinterpreted it. This is the secret. I read the text message where she said run and I interpreted it as, oh, go run. Run like a little bitch. Is that what you're gonna do? You're just gonna run like a little fucking bitch? Is that what the fuck you're gonna do? Are you gonna run in your life? Are you gonna run and stick your head in the sand like a little fucking bitch? Or are you gonna get the fuck back in that house and get those fucking windows cleaned and do a great fucking job? Or are you gonna run? Because if you run now, you're going to keep fucking running. I said, oh yeah? I ain't running. Because the masculine grows through challenge. Right? If you look at a man and you push him up against the wall, well, he's probably going to punch you in the face. But if you say, you're being a little fucking bitch right now and you need to grow some balls and get your shit together, he might cry and whine for a minute, but he's going to be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because... That men grow through challenge, right? And women grow through praise and support. But sometimes men need praise and support too. If a guy doesn't get no support, you know, for a long period of time, he's going to get down. We're humans. We're emotional beings. I went back in the house. I grew a set of balls with a whole new attitude. I got that window fixed. I put it back in. And now I'm like, dude, bingo, bango. The weirdest thing happened in that moment. I go to clean this big, huge window. It's like above the fireplace. I mean, it's a big, huge mirror above the fireplace. And there's like this mantle with all types of stuff around it and memorabilia of uh, somebody who had died. And I said to the lady, do you want me to move? The, let me move this stuff. She's like, you know, and I noticed that um, it was someone special in the family who had passed. And as I was help moving the stuff out of the way, because I didn't want to drip anything on it in this white house, I changed and I said, I could see it in the person's eyes and I said, oh, I'm very, very sorry. Um, and I meant it. I was like, I'm sorry. Nothing personal. I don't get personal. But in that moment, it was called. It's very rare that you ever do anything weird or personal like that. You don't just like say, move the shit out of the way. But, but the person said to me, the lady said that, you know, this person had died. And in that moment, the right thing to do was respond and go, I'm very, very sorry. But she could feel that that was real. And in that moment with the new attitude, I 
I became an artist. I got into the moment. I knew it was do or die, fight, uh, not fight or flight, but it was a moment to fly and soar and be the best that I could be. I'm just talking about windows, but this is life here. I clean the, that, that mirror like, like an artist, perfect. My confidence came in. Then I started banging out the next window, whew, slide it open. Then I did the next window. And even though they were dirty, I did the best that I can. I said, listen, we're gonna do the absolute best that we can. And that's what we're gonna do. I clean the next window, the next window. Then the guy's outside with the water fed pole and he's cleaning. Then this happens. Then everything for some reason just turned around and it started working. And then I'm cleaning these skylights and I'm dripping in sweat and the lady's watching me and she went from being totally pissed off and judgmental wanting us to get the hell out of her house and all the anxiety went away and then she started being like, oh, do you guys want some pops? Do you want some pops? She starts cracking open pop. I'm like, no, thank you. No, thank you. We're here to work. We got to get this job done. No, no, have a pop. And she brings a pop and sets it down and I'm cleaning the windows. I'm like, so I drink the pop like right side of her house. And next thing she know, she's like being really nice and joking around and the whole situation turns like light and sunny. And so t to wrap it up, we finished the whole job and, and it went from an extremely dark situation to extremely bright. And by the time we were wrapping and finishing up and I was making the guys go around, this is when it changed. I said to myself, I don't give a fuck about the money right now. Fuck the money. Fuck money. I'm going to do an amazing job right now, and we're going to do an amazing job, and we're going to knock this lady's socks off, bend over backwards, and I'm going to put my whole heart into this, and I don't care if I die in the process. <laughs> Clean the windows. But we're going to make this thing amazing. And I literally started working like it was my first week, my first window cleaning job, scrubbing my ass off with every little spinner of spots everywhere. Dude, it was crazy. Scrubbing everything, getting on my hands and knees, dripping in sweat, doing everything I possibly could to make this thing amazing. And at the end, the lady was so happy. She's like, can I pay you cash? And she even gave me like a $22 or $18 tip or something. I think I knew there was a tip in there. And she was waving out the window and asking for business cards so she can give them to her friends. I was like, should I really give this lady a business card? How is this going to turn around? <laughs> and I left completely happy. I was exhilarated, stressed. The stress had washed through me. I was dripping in sweat. And I felt like I had just gotten out of battle and made it through. And all I wanted to do was just go home and take a shower and just kick back and, and spend an evening with my wife and walk my dog around the block. That's all that I wanted to do in that moment. And, and, I, and I walked out, I ended up making like something like 140 profit off of the job or 120. I don't know how much it was, but I still made money off of it even though it sucked. But looking back on the scenario, when you have a panic attack or an anxiety attack on the job, it's not really always your fault. The situation, the circumstance, the energy, the customer. That's why when I hear a customer's voice over the phone, if I can hear that feeling or feel that feeling, right, you can, it calibrates. I go, nope, no way. I'm not going into that gauntlet. Been through that. Lesson is repeated until lesson is learned. This happens with landscape jobs. It happens in any small business where in some jobs you are, working and you're having a great day and then in other jobs you're having a shitty day some jobs are great are, are just fun you jump in the house you clean all the windows you're in and out you made like 325 bucks in two hours and then the next job you walk in and you're like fuck anybody can leave comments in the videos saying well your first mistake was this and your first mistake was that and your second mistake was this and blah 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 and i would have done this because i'm king shit and you're all fucking stupid pieces of shit and i'm the shit and you're fucked up well go ahead and do it go ahead and do it but i guarantee you 10 times the amount of guys know exactly what i'm talking about and they go through the same exact anxiety there you go that's what it is day in day out that's what running a small business is I just got off the phone with a guy that 
Uh, I coach from time to time when I get the time. I do personal consulting and coaching over the phone. And sure, we talk about business and numbers and marketing, but mostly we're talking about consciousness. Because if you are in an an unresourceful state of consciousness, Anthony Robbins talks about state management. Let me make sure it's still recording. Check, check. I gotta wrap this up quick because I'm running out of battery. Anthony Robbins talks about state management. I never understood that. What do you mean state management? State of mind, state of emotion, state of consciousness. If you're in in an unresourceful state and you're freaking out, you can't do anything. And you attract that. But when you're well rested and you're abundant and you're, you already know what I'm saying, the reciprocal, the opposite. See how I'm yawning? Yawning is completion. When you yawn, that means, ah. (laughs) All right, cool. Keith Kelfus, just want to get that off my chest, share that story that I go through all the same bullshit that you go through. You're not special. I'm not special. None of us are special. All right, over and out. Click the link in the description below. If you want to get a hold of me, get on my email list. We can stay in contact with each other. It's very important. Uh, Yes. Books on paperback. And there you go. I got a whole video course coming out soon. It's pretty deep stuff. And I care about you. I want to see you succeed. Later.